Okay, this is the beginning of Unit 7. This is, uh, should be a total review. You should have seen how to solve linear equations before. I'm going to run through three different methods. We are going to do a quick warm-up here because this is a skill that's going to come in handy. So again, here's our goal. I can solve systems of linear equations. We're going to start off with linear equations. So it just says solve for y in the warm-up. So y is right here. We're going to move the 6x over by adding 6x to both sides. Those are going to cancel. I'm going to get y equals, and I'm going to write the 6x first. Uh, we normally do that. So this right here is the answer. We've solved for y. This one's a little more complicated, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to move the 2y to the other side, or sorry, the 12y to the other side by subtracting. And then I'm going to rewrite these. I'm going to write it in a more standard order. I'm going to write the 9x plus the 12. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 12. So if I divide everything by negative 12, this is going to give me a y equals. And then I've got a 9 over a negative 12. We want to reduce that. We want to simplify that. So that's going to be a negative 3 fourths x. And then this is going to be a minus 1. So the nice thing about this is if we can solve for y, we can use y equals mx plus b. That's going to be our friend. Remember, that's the graph-friendly form of a linear equation. And then here's where the review starts. When we're solving a system of equations, we want to find the point that makes all the equations in the system true. Okay? And because a graph is a picture of all the points that make the equation true, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the point where the graphs cross. And the fancy word for that is we're looking for where they intersect. And there are three common techniques to do this. We can do graphing, we can do substitution, and we can do elimination. And elimination is most people's favorite, so we'll get to that in just a second. But just a quick reminder, there are three things that can happen when we graph linear equations. If we graph two of them, we can get one solution. Okay, This is what's going to happen most of the time. We get one solution. The fancy way we describe that is it's consistent because it has an answer, and it's independent because the two... The two um, the two equations are independent of each other. So independent, should have left more space for that one. Okay, and then we can also get infinitely many solutions um, because we've got a solution. That means it's consistent. Okay, so that's going to be consistent and dependent because the two lines depend on each other. They're right on top of each other. Okay, one would be here and the other one would be right on top of it. Okay, so they, have, they share an infinite number of, of points in common. Or we can get no solution, and the fancy word for that is inconsistent, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to graph this system. We're going to solve this system by graphing. So again, we're going to put these in slope-intercept form so that we can graph these. And we could use a calculator to help us out if we needed to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the 2 to the other side by subtracting 2. So this is going to give me a 1 half y, and a and I'm just going to write this side over here. I'm just going to flip-flop the sides. This is 3 fourths x and then minus 2. And then I don't want the 1 half in front there, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So multiply this side by 2 and that side by 2. So here's what I get. I get y equals, if I multiply the 2 by 3 fourths, the 2 and the 4 would cancel. So this is going to be 3 over 2. And then this is going to be, let's see, 2 times negative 2. So this is a negative 4. So I'm going to graph this here in just a second, okay? The other one that I'm going to graph is this one. And I need to get that in slope-intercept form. I need to solve for the y. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So this is negative 2y equals, this would be 3x minus 4. And I'm going to divide everything by negative 2, every term on both sides by negative 2. So this is going to be a y. This gives me, oops, negative, i got to flip that over, negative 3 halves x. And then this is a plus 2. So these are the two lines that I'm going to graph. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the red one first. This one crosses at negative 4, so crosses right here. Has a positive slope, so we're going to rise 3 and run 2. Rise 3 and run 2. If we're going the other way, we'd go down 3 and back 2, but everything would line up. And then we just draw as straight a line as we possibly can. Put arrows on it. Okay, the blue one crosses the y-axis at 2 and has a slope of negative 3 halves. So that means it's going to go down from left to right. So we're going to rise negative 3 and then run 2. So rise negative 3, we're going to go down 3, right 2. Down 3, right 2. If we go the other way, that would be up 3 and back 2. Again, we get a line that goes down from left to right, which is what we expect. And then the solution to this is the point where they cross. So that's right there. So that's going to be the point 2, negative 1. So I'm going to circle that. That's the answer. 
So that's how we do it with graphing. The problem with graphing is you need a piece of graph paper. You've got to be really accurate. And this one, we got a nice answer. But if it doesn't turn out to be a nice answer, if it turns out to be a fraction or decimal or something like that, total pain to do it with graphing. So we employ a different technique, and it's called substitution to find exact answers. Now, most of the ones that we've got on this assignment, they're pretty easy. They work out to be nice numbers, so we don't have to sweat this too much. But here's how substitution works. With substitution, we want to find one of these variables, either the first one, second one, third one, or fourth one, and we want to get one of them by itself. So we want to pick the easiest one to get by itself, and by far, that's the easiest one to get by itself. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 6x to this side and 6x to this side. So I get y equals 6x minus 10. Now, wherever there's, an, wherever there's a y in this particular problem, I can put 6x minus 10. And if you haven't heard this before, we want to make sure we're clear. We can't solve an equation with two variables. So I can't solve that one, and I can't solve that one. And I still can't solve this one when I rearrange it. But what I can do is if I've made a rearrangement of the second one, wherever there's a y in this problem, I can put a 6x minus 10. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to rewrite that first equation. So this equation right here, I'm going to rewrite it as negative 2x plus 2 times. Instead of putting a y right there, I'm going to put what y equals. So this is going to be 6x minus 10 equals negative 10. So if you'll notice, I'm going to highlight both of these. These both are exactly the same equation. The only difference is where there used to be a y, I replaced it with a 6x minus 10. Now, this might look worse, but it's actually great because this has only one variable. Can't solve equations with two variables, but we can solve an equation with one variable. So I'm going to distribute through negative 2x plus 12x minus 20 equals negative 10. These are like terms, so I'm going to combine those to be whoops, 10x minus 20 equals negative 10. We're going to add 20, so I get 10x equals 10. So this means I end up with, once I divide by 10, I end up with, whoops, I end up with x equals 1. Okay, now that's quite a bit of work, but we're actually more than half done. We're actually most of the way done, because all I need to do is I just need to take this, and I plug it in to find the y. So now in this problem, wherever there's an x, I can put a 1. Um, I think I said that right. Yeah, wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a 1. So I'm going to write this as y equals 6 times, we're putting a 1 right here, minus 10. So 6 minus 10, y is equal to negative 4. So here's the other part. But again, what we're doing here is we're finding the point where the lines cross. So we want to write this as an ordered pair. So this is 1 comma negative 4. Put parentheses around it. We're all set. So that's how you do a substitution problem. This was pretty easy because it was easy to get that y by itself. Now, let's take a look at this next example. Um, none of these are particularly easy to get by themselves, but we want to pick the easiest one. So if you look at this, if I try and get this x by itself, at some point I'm going to have to divide by negative 2. Well, the good news is 2 would go into 6 and it would go into 2. When I look at this next one, if I tried to get this x by itself, I'd have to divide by 6. That's going to make fractions out of this all day long. Same thing if I tried to get the y by itself. I'd have to divide by 5 to get rid of that, and I'd make fractions out of this. Same thing with the 6. So by far, the best one to get by itself is this one right here. So I'm going to move the 6y to the other side, so I'm going to do that by adding 6y. So this is going to give me negative 2x um, equals 6y minus 2, and then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So those are going to cancel, and I get x equals, this is going to be a negative 3y plus 1. And now I'm in the situation that I had on that other one, wherever there's an x, I can put a negative 3y plus 1. And since I was messing around with the first equation, this is basically a rearrangement of the first equation, I don't want to plug it back into the first equation. That's like going around in circles. I want to plug it into the second equation. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it right there. So this is going to be 6 parentheses, negative 3y plus 1 plus 5y equals 19. Distribute through. So this is going to give me a negative 18y. And then this is going to be plus 6 plus 5y equals 19. Hopefully this works out here. Uh, let's see, negative 13y. And I'm going to subtract the 6 while I'm at it. That's going to give me a 13 over here. And this is good news because when I divide by the negative 13, 
I get y equals negative 1. And again, it might seem like, my gosh, that's a ton of work to go through just to get one answer, but we're almost done with this because all I have to do with this is plug it in. Whoops, I'm going to change colors here. Is plug it in, there we go, right there. So x is going to equal negative 3 times negative 1 plus 1. So that's 3 plus 1. So I end up with x equals 4. So there's the other part of the answer. It goes really quick. So again, ordered pair, it's 4 for the x, negative 1 for the y. Whoops, make that look right. There we go. Okay. All right, let me zoom out and we'll take a look at the last technique. The last technique is the one that most people like the best. It's called elimination. Okay, and it's called that because we're going to eliminate one of the variables. You'll see how in just a second. Um, we do have to know how to do substitution first in order to do elimination, and you'll see that in just a second. So here's the deal. When we're eliminating a variable, so remember, we can't solve an equation with two variables. Um, we've got to have turn it into one variable. So the way this works is we want to make these coefficients the same number but opposite signs. So if I'm going to change these into a number, I've got to make them bigger, generally speaking. So this is a 7 and a 9. I could change those into a 63. This is a 7 and a 4, and that would be 28. So if I had a choice, I'm probably going to ch choose the 28. So here's what I need to do with this. I need to take this one, and I'm going to turn that into a 28. So I'm going to multiply by 4, and I'm going to write my answer over here. So that's going to be distribute through, and I've got to hit everything on both sides. So this is a 28x. This is a 28y. And if I multiply the two of those together, that's negative 84, okay? Now, if I turn this one into a 28, in order to eliminate it when I combine these together, I need to turn that into a negative 28. So I'm going to multiply it by negative 7. So if we multiply this by negative 7, and we're going to hit every single one of these, this is going to be a 63x. This is going to be a negative 28y. And if I multiply the two of those together, let's see, that's going to be negative, first of all. And 7 times 14, that's going to be, what do we got? Uh, sometimes 98. Let me just double check here. Make sure we got this. 7 times 14. Yep, 98. Okay, perfect. Now, here's why we call this elimination. Once I get this, I've made two new copies of those equations. But watch what happens if I combine the two of these together. 28 plus 63 is 91x. 28y minus 28y is no y's, so they're eliminated. And then over here, I've got, uh, let's see, we'll do negative 84. Uh, I hate to make mistakes on these, so let me just double check and make sure we got it. Uh, negative 182, which I am not very familiar with that. But if I divide that, I end up with, well, that, that would go in there twice. So I end up with a negative 2. So I've got x equals negative 2. A little bit quicker than, than uh, substitution, especially on numbers like this. Okay? So I've got <clears throat> x equals negative 2. And then I take that and I plug it into one of the other equations. It doesn't matter which one of these four equations I plug it into. They're all true equations, but I want to pick the easiest place to plug it in. So I'm going to plug it in the one with the smallest numbers and the fewest number of negatives. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right there. So this is 7 times negative 2 plus 7y equals negative 21. So this is negative 14 plus 7y equals negative 21. So we're going to add 14. So that's 7y equals negative 7. So if I divide both sides by negative 7, I'm going to get y equals negative 1. Okay? So here's the answer negative 2 comma negative 1. I put a box around that, and that's the answer, okay? Now, um, you might get clever on a couple of these, but if it does say solve using elimination, we do want to use that technique. I want to come, to come over and take a look at this one, and notice that these are pretty huge numbers. I mean, if I were to make 15 and 25 the same number, I'd probably have to make it like a 150. I think that's the smallest you could go, maybe 75. 27 and 45, gosh, that's, man, that'd be a pretty big, that, it would be ugly to find those, that's the point. But sometimes you'll get lucky and you can notice that you can actually make the numbers smaller. So I want you to take a look at this right here. We've got 25, negative 45, and 5. So 
if I were to take this and just divide everything by five, so here's what I've got. I'm going to draw a repeat of this one. So this is or actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to write down, uh, this is going to be five X. This is going to be negative nine Y, and this is going to be a one. So this red equation right here is just a smaller copy of this original one. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that off. And then I can look at this and say, well, wait a minute. I can turn both of these into a 15. And by the way, that's already negative. So I can just turn that into a positive 15. Even here, I could turn those into a 27. That wouldn't be too bad. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to rewrite this one now. So this is going to be negative 15x plus 27y equals negative 3. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply it by something that's going to turn the 5 into a 15. So I need to turn that into a positive 15x. I'm going to multiply by 3. Okay. Again, multiply both sides. So this is going to be a 15x minus 27y. And over on the other side, we get a 3. And again, the whole point here is we wanted to eliminate those. So same number, same coefficient, but opposite signs. So those are going to go away. So those cancel. But take a look here. We've got 27y minus 27y. That means those go away. And 3 minus 3, those go away. So what's left on both sides? 0 equals 0. So stop and think about this. We were trying to find the point where the lines cross. We were trying to find a point that would make both equations true. And we ended up with a true equation. No variable, but just 0 equals 0. That's a true statement. So think about what that would be. In this case, this is what happens. We get infinitely many solutions. Okay, This is going to be a consistent dependent system. These are actually the same line, just a different formats of the same line, different multiples of the same line. So this is going to be infinitely many solutions. Um, that means the lines would be parallel. Uh, sorry, right on top of each other, not parallel. Parallel would be no solution. And then I also want you to take a look at this one right here. We could have pulled the same trick on this one. You notice we've got a 7, a 7, and a 21. We could have divided those by uh, 7. That doesn't happen all the time, but occasionally it will happen. So if you get some big, ugly numbers, see if you can make them smaller. If not, you've always got your calculator. All right, good luck.